As much as I am a proponent of buying what you love and watch collecting, some of my favorite videos I've made on this channel have been surrounding the business side of watch collecting. And today we are going to be looking at the top selling Swiss watch brands and much more by analyzing a report from Lux Consult and Morgan Stanley. This is their sixth year of creating this report and I wait for it every year like it's Christmas morning and I was able to get my hands at all 38 pages of this year's report. And I wanted to share some of the findings within it. For the sake of this video, we'll be breaking down this report into three primary categories. First, looking at the top 10 brands in the Swiss watch industry based on turnover. Then look quickly at the following 10 brands that make up the top 20 while calling out some of the most notable winners in the industry overall. And to close, we'll look at some high level figures on exports and value totals as some of them are encouraging and others alarming. Now, given the private operation of some of the brands in this report, figures have been approximated. This includes Swiss wristwatches only, new watch sales only, with these figures of the top 20 being led by turnover. I will link down below to Lux Consult. It's a firm run by consultant Oliver Muller. And in the description at the bottom, we'll also have an explanation of how this market share is calculated for those that are interested in just investigating this a little bit further. All the info and the charts in this report cannot be reproduced without Lux Consult and Morgan Stanley's Express authorization. I had to get approval for all this. As always, buy and wear what you love. That said, I do think it is beneficial at times to have this activity to look at reports like this as it offers some compelling takeaways to learn from and help us to better understand consumer behavior on a global scale. And since we're going to be talking about sales data here, mostly, if you want just a general crash course on the world of Swiss watches, I'd recommend checking out our article down below, looking at 57 of some of the top brands in Swiss watch making that you should know as an enthusiast. In the article, we go through some details that you should know about their founding, some information of some of their top models, and some other facts to be aware of when looking at the brand. Link will be in the description down below. Now to kick us off here, let's look at the top 10 brands in turnover in Swiss watches based on 2022 sales results. So to kick us off at number one, we have Rolex coming in with 9.3 billion Swiss francs in turnover. And all the figures in this report are in Swiss francs. A couple of things looking at that 9.3 billion number from Rolex, that is up 21% year over year with 1.2 million watches approximately being sold in the annual period. When looking at the total retail value of the Swiss watch market, Rolex accounts for 29% of the total. Remarkable numbers. And here where I am in the US is even more dramatic with Rolex accounting for 40% of the US market. And just to give some further context to how large that number is, if you wanna compare it to another segment, let's talk about Apple and the smartphone market, they're roughly around 50% of the US smartphone market in general. Now the Rolex group, including Tudor, is reaching 30.9% of the total retail value in Swiss watches, making it the largest group in all of Swiss watch making, despite only consisting of two brands, with Tudor making up just a small fraction of the total. Next, we have Cartier at number two with 2.75 billion, having 620,000 units sold, equating to 7% share in the total retail value of the Swiss watch industry. Cartier overtook Omega in 2021 as a byproduct of a perfect storm, including a strong reemergence in the collector's market, thanks to auction results led by models such as the Crash and a restructuring of their product offering. An astonishing point when looking at the numbers for Cartier is the fact that the watch are merely only 28% of the total sales mix for the brand. And number three, we have Omega with 2.47 billion, up 6% year over year, a number that despite being positive is below the Swiss watch industry average of increase, selling approximately 560,000 units. In total retail value share, Omega is sitting at approximately 8%. Omega in the past years have quickly widened exposure outside of China, which has been a leading market for Omega and has been felt with slower recovery since 2020 COVID lockdowns. Further, Omega is the crown jewel of the business of the Swash Group being far and away their leading brand in terms of both sales and profitability. Coming in at number four, we have AP with 2.01 billion in turnover, 50,000 units approximately, up a staggering 27% year over year, which certainly benefited greatly from this being a big year for the Royal Oak celebrating 50 years. Last year, they were roughly 4.7% of the total retail value in Swiss watches, an impressive figure for a privately owned organization and a nice climb from 2018, where the brand was sitting around seventh in the Swiss watch industry. At number five, we have Patek Philippe at 1.8 billion in turnover based on approximately 68,000 units sold, 
up 18% year over year in turnover. Patek accounted for 5% of the total retail value in Swiss watches in 2022. When examining Patek's position, it is important to keep in mind we saw a discontinuation of one of their best sellers, the 5711, which certainly played a role in AP solidifying its position at number four. Next, although being polarizing, perhaps the greatest success story in modern watchmaking, Richard Mill a brand that was only started in 2001, now firmly sitting in the sixth position in total turnover in the Swiss watch industry with 1.3 billion, with sales up 15% year over year. What is remarkable about Richard Mill further is despite the polarizing position, they have exploded with their turnover in a very short period of time. In 2018, they did not even crack the top 20 in turnover among Swiss watch brands, now sitting among the leaders in the industry with approximately 5,300 units sold. That's it. With an average selling price of 245,283 Swiss francs. Sitting at the number seven position in total Swiss turnover, we have Longines at 1.208 billion, being the only brand in the top 10 that eclipsed Rolex's total units sold, but still it was a slower year for the brand given the delayed recovery of China. Longines has made great strides in diversifying its mix of markets served and has solidified itself as one of the few brands in the watch industry eclipsing a billion. Although it has fallen a few positions as a result of the staggering growth of the three brands previously mentioned. In terms of retail market share, it now equals 3.9% of the total Swiss watch market. Next, we have IWC eclipsing 908 million in turnover with 150,000 units sold approximately. It has been a strong last couple of years for the brand in rising the ranks in total turnover with them sitting at the 10th position in 2020, now jumping up two positions currently sitting in eighth. They are now 2.6% of the total Swiss market retail value. Sitting in the ninth position in turnover at 860 million in 2022 is Breitling, a brand who has seen a great rise in their position since Kern took over the direction of the brand in 2017. At that time, the brand was sitting at just 19th in total turnover in Swiss watches, jumping a staggering 10 positions in just five years under their new leadership, with their total retail value making up 2.6% of Swiss watches. And rounding out the top 10 is the oldest name of the bunch dating back to 1755, Vacheron Constantin reaching 825 million in turnover. Vacheron catapulted up several positions since 2020, where they sat at the 14th position in total turnover, no question being assisted by the rise of excitement surrounding their overseas collection and steady growth within their popular historique family of classic watches. The brand now accounts for 2.2% of the total Swiss watch retail value. So that is your top 10, but now let's go through the next 10 to get into our final top 20 brands in the Swiss watch industry. At number 11, we have Tissot. An interesting point here is that the only brand in the top 20 with an average retail value under $1,000. Next at 12, we have Hublot, 13, Tag Heuer, 14, JLC, 15, Tudor, 16, Panerai, 17, Van Cleef and Arpels, 18, Hermes, 19, Blancpain, and 20, Chopard. To call attention to some of the bigger winners in the past two years outside of the top 10, the largest standout has to be Hermes, who made their first appearance in the top 20 in 2021, jumping an additional two positions this year and eclipsing a half a billion in turnover. Other winners include Blancpain, Van Cleef, Tudor, and Chopard, having all solidified themselves in the top 20 in the last few years. A few brands outside of the top 20 also that had some strong years were former caring group brands such as the Ulysse Nardin and Gerard Perigo, with GP quickly growing thanks to the Laureato. Another brand that has expanded in the watch category is Jacob & Co with the watch turnover now reaching 130 million. Also with the release of the Moon Swatch, Swatch had a very strong year, just falling outside of the top 20 with the Moon Swatch selling approximately 1 million units in 2022 worldwide. And for the final section of this report, let's take a look at export volumes and values as these tell two very different stories. In terms of total exports by volume, there were approximately 15.8 million Swiss watches exported in 2022. Of that number, 6 million came from mechanical watches and 9.8 million from quartz, with the Moon Swatch accounting for an estimated 950,000 exported units, almost being responsible for 10% of the total Swiss quartz watches exported. These total numbers are sizable. However, since 2008, Total Swiss watch exports by volume have dropped over 40% from 26.1 million that year. 
An interesting point when examining this data is how Swiss mechanical watches have been much more steady in terms of exports. As in 2008, 4.3 million Swiss mechanical watches were exported, meaning in 2022 reports show a 38% increase from that 2008 figure. However, it is down from the peak of 2014 when the total mechanical Swiss watch exports reached 8.1 million. That considered, the real reason for these down export figures are from affordable quartz watches, a segment that no question has been impacted the most by the emergence of smartwatches, with there being roughly 90 million smartwatches sold in just 2022 alone. Yet to paint a full picture of this story, we must also look at the total value of the Swiss watch market. This has increased dramatically from 15.9 billion in 2008 to 23.7 billion in 2022, the highest peak of any year since 2008. This has been led by a dramatically surging high-end side of the market, where consumers are looking for Swiss watches to serve a different purpose of a finely made luxury item that can be a sense of status instead of a tool used for telling the time. The privately owned big four of Rolex, AP, Patek, and Richard Mill now have a 41.7% share of the total Swiss watch retail value. And when summing up the total of the top 10 brands, it equals 67.7% of that Swiss watch retail value. Wholesale values also tell a dramatic story as watches with wholesale values of 3000 Swiss francs and above accounted for 76% of the total while only accounting for 12.7% of the export volume. Furthering this point of a top heavy market also can be demonstrated by the layout of the larger groups within the industry and their percentage of the total retail value of Swiss watches. Rolex, which consists of two brands accounts for 30.9% of the whole 94% of that 30.9% coming from Rolex with just 6% coming from Tudor just to give some scale to how large Rolex is in comparison. The Swatch Group comes in second with their chunk of the pie being 19.8%. Richemont is not far behind at 19.5%. And then we see a steep drop off where LVMH accounts for 6.3%, Patek at 5.1%, AP with 4.7%, Richard Mill with 2.7%, Breitling at 2.6%, and the others outside the larger groups making up the remaining 8.5%. Well, all right, everybody, that is my take on just kind of breaking down this report. I was not able to go through everything. It is a 38 page report, uh, but just some of the highlights, some of the figures. And if you guys found this entertaining, helpful, interesting, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that because that's a great indicator for me if you want me to do more of this content in the future. Definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to create the content on this channel, including the video here today, is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market for a watch, we know you have plenty of options when looking to buy, uh, but we would love to have your business and allows us to keep doing what we're doing here. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.